Hi, my name is Johanna Mandel. I'm the Associate Chair of Undergraduate Studies in Geography and Environmental Management. That means I'm not just a prof, I teach courses in second and fourth year right now, but I'm also in charge of a lot of our curriculum issues. So making sure that you can get the courses you need when you need them, making sure we have enough courses to support our specializations and really looking at how it all fits together. I'm also the person you go to when things really aren't quite what they normally are. For example, if you run into some unforeseen circumstances in your life, I work with our advising team to make sure that we can work around whatever it is that you're facing and put you in the best position to succeed. So if you're looking at this, you've probably got an offer from geography. And you may not really think much about geography as a label. It used to be a common one in schools, but increasingly we teach it under other titles like world issues and earth science. So here at Waterloo, we look at geography as really three main areas, the human systems, the natural environment, and environmental analysis and techniques. And at the heart of our discipline is how those three overlap. So when I talk about human systems, I think of things like cities, but also things like how we work. So for example, we have a fourth year course that is all about the gig economy. Think things like Instacart and Uber Eats and Uber itself. They're working online piecemeal, so the gigs, instead of being a regular employee. The natural environment is the physical world. So the world around you, what caused this drumlin? Why does this river look the way it is? How does water move through the environment? How do weather patterns work? And what does that mean? The environmental analysis and techniques is one of our really strong suits. So this is where we get into a lot of geomatics techniques like GIS and remote sensing, but also things like statistic, lab skills, working with human subjects, so surveying with human participants, but also the other kind of surveying where you're actually contributing to mapping of land. And where those overlap is where we get into issues like climate change. So climate change is fundamentally a natural environment problem in that the planet is heating more than we would like, but it's driven by human systems. And to really understand it, we need to understand data, we need to understand modeling. So that's a classic issue that geographers look at because it combines those three areas of expertise. Now, not every one of our courses is in that overlap. Some are purely in one of these, in one of these circles. However, Every one of our students becomes competent in all three of those areas. And after that, when you're competent, so that's usually at the end of your second year, if you want to, you can specialize in just one of these. You can also keep taking courses from all three areas. Geography and Environmental Management at Waterloo has a long tradition. We're one of the top five geography programs in Canada. And we really focus on solving real world problems. We're a very applied department. So you take those skills, those lab skills, those data skills, but also your understanding of how the environment works and how people move in the environment to really address real world problems like climate change. We have a very strong focus on hands-on learning, not only in labs and technical courses, but also through field trips. We do a lot of teaching outside, including in other countries. Also, because it's Waterloo, we have a very strong focus on experiential educations. Our flagship programs are the co-op programs, which let you graduate with up to 20 months of work experience. That means five terms at Waterloo, we have three terms a year of paid experience. You can get the co-op degree with only four terms, which allows room for things like international exchanges, for example. Waterloo two students tend to graduate with very strong applied skills and to be very much job ready. That isn't just the co-op students. Co-op is the flagship, but we provide those opportunities even if you're not in co-op. So the best way you could find out about our program is to talk to our current students. Now, unfortunately, because of COVID-19, we can't have our open houses. You can't meet our students. When we do have our open houses, our students are very enthusiastically there. So as a substitute, you can read Cass's uh, statement on why she chose geography at Waterloo. I believe that picture was taken in the Canadian Arctic when Cass did our Arctic cruise field course last year. So as noted, we're very much focused on experiential learning. What Dina is doing there is setting up a total station for surveying. 
That's a very strong skill that many of our students in the geomatics stream develop, but of course these courses are open to everyone. Experiential learning isn't just the technical stuff, the, the lab stuff. It's also dealing with the natural environment and people. So for example here, they're sampling water, which they will then analyze in the lab setting for biogeochemistry, for example. And as noted, we have a lot of field courses. So field work ranges from on campus. We have a third year course called Carbon in the Biosphere, which is taught on our own campus, but mostly outside and then back in the lab. But go as far as Nepal, Indonesia, and locally, so Rockwood, the Bruce Peninsula. Unfortunately, this year we've had to cancel all of our um, out of province field courses for obvious reasons, but we hope to be back at that soon. It's one of our favorite things to do and something we're really good at, and it lets you practice those skills you've learned in all kinds of settings, in the lab, in technical courses, in the field. So for example, when we go to Germany, of course I co-teach. We use some of our geomatic skills to map what's going on in cities in transition. So it's not just that go somewhere cool, it's apply the skills you've been developing to real world issues. A normal first year in geography environmental management at Waterloo looks like this. Now this year, we may have to rearrange some of those things to best suit you. Depending on what happens with the current rapidly evolving COVID-19 situation, we will have to look at that to see maybe we switch the terms when we offer some things, but we are in a good position to offer a full first year, including all of these courses, whether we'll be able to do it in person or online. So in a normal first year, assuming we're back in person, you would take Geography 100. It has the title on becoming a geographer. It's a course where all the students in it are just starting on their geography degree. Now, typically our class is between 30 and 50 students, so you really get to know the other students that you go through this degree with. That's particularly important because these other classes in first year are really big. So Geography 101, Human Geographies, People, Place, and Change, often has upward of 300 students in it. Our class sizes are by far the largest in first year. By fourth year, you're looking at classes of 20 to 30 students, sometimes even smaller. Geography 181, Designing Effective Maps, is really a cartography course. And then EMBS 178 and 278 are the data and stats courses. You also take English 109. There you're in sections of only 25 students, the Introduction to Academic Writing courses, and of course, an Introductory Physical Geography course. Geography has a lot of electives, so in your first year, you have three, elect three free electives. That can be a language, say you want to beef up your French skills or you want to learn Spanish or German or Russian or Arabic, but it can be anything really you want. There's courses in the Faculty of Arts, for example, on mythology, or very popular with our students, courses in the Faculty of Math, taking a computer science course. That's really up to you. We can help advise you, but we do make the room that you can explore other things. We have five specializations in geography. You don't have to do a specialization. Most of our students do choose one, but you don't have to decide on that till at least third year. Because in first and second year, you're taking courses by definition from the first four of these specializations. So the Earth System Science one, so for example, Geography 102, the physical geography course contributes to that. Economy and Society, so that maps to Geography 101, the human systems course. Climate Change and Environment, so you start taking dedicated climate change courses in second year. And of course, geomatics. Everybody has to graduate with at least one cartography and one GIS course, and we strongly recommend a remote sensing course. But there are many, many courses. There's more courses there, including things like spatial data management. We also offer a non-flying aviation specialization. So let's say your goal is to become a pilot, and you either can't afford to take the geography and aviation program right now, or you didn't get an offer for it. This lets you have all the classroom-based aviation specialization stuff, without the flying part. So you can do the private's license private, private pilot's license privately or at a later date. Aviation is a good fit for geography because we also teach a lot of courses in tourism and travel. So there's a natural fit there, but you do not have to take a single aviation course. However, there's enough room in the program that you can easily add those courses. It's Waterloo, so there's a lot of focus on careers, on getting you ready for your job. And one of the big ways to do that is through co-op. 
So co-op lets you have 16 or 20 months of work experience, depending on whether or not you do four or five co-ops. And typically over five terms, geography students pay ranges from 38 to $85,000 total. Co-op has a lot of advantages, not just getting paid. The biggest is obviously getting a resume. You have experience. That puts you at the head of the queue when you apply for jobs because you've already done some jobs in your field. It also let, lets you grow your network and really importantly, try out different careers. You may think you want to work in government, but then you do a co-op or two. Turns out that's not the best fit for you. You actually want to be in the private sector or in a startup or vice versa. This is a low risk way of doing it. And it's much easier to get your foot in the door because an employer is committing to you for four months. They're just as interested in seeing what you have to offer as you are in seeing what they have to offer. Because that way, you become low risk when they want to hire you in the future. They already know you. So the career advantage of co-op can't be overstated. The big differences are that you're more likely to work in your field and that your starting salaries are much bigger. So obviously, this may change a little bit in the coming year because of COVID-19. Currently, 87% of Ontario graduates are employed within six months of graduation. Waterloo graduates slightly higher, 91%. But the bigger difference is, is that almost all of Waterloo graduates work in jobs related to their program compared to only 79% of Ontario graduates. Now that's still really good, 79%. University is a really good investment. However, you also start with much higher salaries if you have some experience. So almost 80% of Waterloo Co-op grads earn more than 50,000 starting salaries. Ontario-wide, that's only 38%. Because keep in mind, you're not starting from the first square. You've got two years work experience in hand already. So a question that often comes up, and if we were in person, I would call on the student volunteers that are in the room to talk about their past co-ops. So typical co-ops are with provincial and federal ministries, so for example, a policy research assistant with Environment and Climate Change Canada, or with provincial ministries, similarly like the Ontario Ministry of Culture. Also a lot of uh, private sectors, so environmental scientists with the MMM group, or a GIS technician with Ontario uh, Ministry of Transportation, or with a geospatial technology company. We also place a lot of students with conservation authorities, and there are on-campus co-op jobs, so for students who are particularly interested in research, often PROS will hire research assistants from the co-op stream, or even students who want to go on to teach someday, we hire students to go into high schools through outreach. Maybe you've met one of our co-op students doing that in your high school. Of course, there is the non-co-op program as well. The big advantage of Waterloo Geography is that we let students switch in and out of co-op until the end of their second year. So if you applied for non-co-op and you're thinking, oh, I should have been in co-op, as long as your grades are fine, we allow that. Similarly, if you start in co-op and then you realize you know exactly what you want to do and you just want to get there, well, you switch out and do the non-co-op degree. We have an incredibly flexible program. But if you're in non-co-op, you have the big advantage of your summers off. Now, even co-op students get their first summer off. So you come to school for eight months and that first summer is off. In that time, you can travel, you can have your summer job, say a camp counselor, which wouldn't be a typical co-op job because it doesn't contribute to your degree, or volunteer, including internationally, but you can also take classes in the summer to graduate even sooner. We're a three-term school, meaning we offer a full set of classes every single term. That becomes really important if you find that you can't keep up with the pace one term because something happened in your life. We let you take up to five courses, but be aware that three courses is a full-time load for OSAP. And we consider every student with three or more courses a full-time student. Tuition is paid on a per course basis. So if you take three courses, you pay far less tuition than someone who takes five courses. So if you want to slow it down, you can do that and then catch up in the summer. Or if you just want to take longer, uh, longer than the normal program, that's okay too. If something happened in a course or in your life and you did poorly in that course, you end up dropping that course, you don't lose a whole year. It's very, very easy to catch up. We also offer something called the EDGE certificate, which is an experiential certificate for non-co-op students to really show that you have some of these applied skills. 
So the Waterloo Professional Development courses are available to both co-op and non-co-op courses. They're non-degree courses, meaning they don't count towards graduation, but they will show up on your transcript. So those are things like resume building, project management, and that. So what do you end up doing? Well, here are some sample careers of recent geography environmental management geography environmental management graduates. So for example, working for EY, formerly Ernst & Young, as a climate change and sustainability services associate, or working with a mining company like the Beers Canada, or with Soil Probe, but also working at other universities. So a recent grad works as manager of advocacy and government services at the University of Western Ontario, working as analysts with some of the geospatial companies like Esri Canada, working with forestry companies, lots and lots of government jobs. So here's an example from the Alberta Ministry of Environment. You'll also find lots of them with Natural Resources Canada, with Environment and Climate Change Canada, with the Ontario Ministry of Transportation, and so on. Also, many of our students end up going to grad school. That's up to you. You don't need to, you're in a good position to get a job, but if that's something you want to pursue, you're in an excellent position after your gym degree. So, you probably already have an offer in hand. But if you don't, here's what you need. Our admission average for both the co-op and the regular program is in the low 80s from Ontario High School or Canadian High School. There are equivalencies for international schools. Those are assessed on a case-by-case -case basis. You do need grade 12 U English and you need a minimum of 70% to come to Waterloo. We recommend that you have a science or math course and a language course, but you don't need those. And even if you didn't take that in the university stream, you can still take courses in that here. We have a number of introductory language courses, introductory math courses to catch up on that. Again, we have lots of electives in GEM. Now, if you are in a good position and you have good grades, there are scholarships for you automatic ones. That means if you applied and your grades are in this range, you get this. So if you have 95 or higher, you automatically get $4,000, half from the Faculty of Environment, half from the University of Waterloo. 90 to 94.9, that's 3,000, and 85 to 89.9 is 1,500. So the automatic scholarships can get you up to 4,000. There are other scholarships that require you to fill out the admissions information form because we want to know a little bit more about you than just your grades for these. The premium one of those is the Dean Scholarship for Excellence. Our Dean gives, up, gives out up to five of these a year and those are $7,500 over your first two terms. So your 1A and 1B term in your first year. There's also the Environment Student Engagement Award. There are up to 25 of those awarded each year and they're worth $2,000 each. So that's a brief introduction. It's no substitute for meeting in person. I am very sad about that, but it is what it is. I hope to see you in person in the fall or whenever that's safe to do so, so we will follow public health guidelines. But in the meantime, do contact us. We're all sitting in front of our computers all day. So here's a general um, environment info email, so envinfo at uwaterloo.ca. They will triage those emails. So if it's a very academic question, it'll end up with me. But if it's an admissions question, it ends up with the registrar's office. So people managing those emails know exactly where your email inquiry should go. We will answer every single one of them. And we really do hope to hear from you. Open houses are some of our favorite things to do. I've been tracking students that I've met at open houses that end up coming to Waterloo throughout their degree. And it's really nice. I think sometimes they're surprised when I say, well, your parents really were interested in you doing this. And then how do you know that? Well, because you came to an open house when you were in grade 11. So we missed that this year, but like anything else, we work around it, including this is my very first voice over PowerPoint presentation. And we're all learning new skills at all times. I do know how to do lots of video calls now. So if you want to chat with me about your prospective program, EMV Info can put you in touch with me. Bye.